thank you father in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord i welcome us to the 16th day of power the hand of the lord has been upon us and with us all this while and this morning the hand of the lord is set to move us forward um, we will take our base from second chronicles chapter 20 please follow me we have very unique unique area that the lord is leading us to this morning second chronicles chapter 20 it came to pass verse 1 after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them order beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria and behold they be in Hazan Tama, which is Engedi. Verse 3 And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now we are going to read further, but I want us to note one or two things before we move. The topic this morning says, Winning life battles by faith. Life is a battle. The whole activities of life are full of battles. But there are certain times the devil and his agents sets out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In this case, the Bible says it came to pass after this also. Afterwards, I have to go back to know what happened before in the last chapter. I discovered that Jehoshaphat just finished setting up judges, advising them on what to do and how to go about the matters of the kingdom. If you read the last two verses, you know, okay, let me just read the last verse, verse 11. He was talking to them. He said, And behold, Amariah the chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord. He's talking to the judges that he has set up. He has given them a lot of godly advice. And Zabadiah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters. Also, the Levites shall be officers before you. He now spoke and said, Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. And the Bible now says, It came to pass after this that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon. And with them, other beside that there are other people that they also gathered together and they came against Jehoshaphat to battle. First of all, how do we identify battles of life? How do we distinguish between days of battle and days of peace? There is no, though we, we see battles come against us from time to time, but I must let us know that, or remind us that there are seasons of battles. If you read 2 Samuel 11, the Bible says, in the time the kings go to war. So that is to say, not all the time that kings go to war. So, but sometimes, because sometimes life activities 
present themselves as if they are normal even when there is a battle behind them we need to be careful to identify when there are battle seasons or when the season of battle has come upon us now what happened here the bible said jehoshaphat feared when he heard the news he feared now that is the only thing that he did as a man the next thing he did was to set himself to seek god so what is battle battle is whatever that is abnormal that happens to a man that gets you afraid gets you worried any condition that you find yourself that gets you troubled just know that something is behind it the bible said in proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 guard your heart with all diligence now because once the heart is affected once you are no longer at peace at rest then something is happening already in the realm of the spirit and if care is not taken something else will follow suit the thief cometh to steal battle is coming to take away that which is yours to take away some most time first of all your peace of mind and then he can now go ahead to take away other things around you he can steal your finances he can steal the things that you have gathered together we saw some time some days ago how the Midianites and the um, the, the Amalekites the, the, the even the Philistines the, their, their strategy of you know robbing the threshing floor of the Israelites and then we, uh, 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 the Philistines battling against the Kayla robbing stealing their grains we also saw how the Amalekites and the Midianites team together in Judges chapter 6 and they were trying to impoverish um, the children of Israel so these things comes to steal to kill that's another aspect battle is is coming with a target to kill either to kill your spiritual life and then move to the physical or to kill the physical directly like in this case is a battle to kill they want to wipe them out and then to destroy now i want us to note something this is not one country coming against israel this is more than two countries the bible said the children of moab country of moab and then the children of ammon and then other people in fact when you read it further you notice that there are people from mount Seir, that is descendant of esau descendant of um moab and ammon if you look at this this set of people now you will notice that they are the brothers and cousin brothers of israel are you are you, are you following me I want you to see, see the people that are fighting this battle. Look at verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. These are the three, three countries that came together. Mount Seir. And you know Mount Seir are the children of um, Esau. Esau is a direct brother of, a twin brother of Israel. Then Ammon and um, Moab. They are, I think they are children of um, Lot. Yes, children of Lot. They are all, in fact, when Israel was moving from um, um, Egypt towards Canaan, God warned them that they should not ever try to fight the Ammonites or the Moabites or the Mount Seir because he has given them their inheritance. So that whatever they, wherever they are, they should not go near them. Because they are their brothers. They, they are, they are son, there's a relationship. Now, you can see in this case, it is their own brother that came up, teamed up against them. Now, we need to note that battles, sometimes and in most cases, comes from unexpected source or sources. Sometimes it is the, pe the person or the people that you, you least expected that the devil will use. Because these people, if they are to be in their right senses, they should not fight Israel. They should not try to wipe out Judah. I mean, they are your own brothers. In most cases, and that's the most dangerous of battles, the one that is coming from inside the family. 
the one you know the one that is coming from outside at least you know that this is an enemy this is a philistian this is an amalekite you know that kind of thing we, we have met the egyptians we have met the philistians we have met the Amalekites. now we are now seeing battle from what from within the family cycle this one is not coming from far distance enemy this one is an internal enemy and of course we know that these things are real happening in our time sometimes it may be your own brother your own blood brother the same father the same mother that the devil will enter into to say you he's not doing it on his own he's your brother on a normal sense he should not fight against you but there is an enemy always remember that that your brother is not your enemy are you getting it there's an enemy that has entered into him and is trying to use him to manipulate your progress and say how can he rise above me i should be the, the richest person in this family and then he will now begin to target what sometimes they want to kill i've seen where it happened and it was clearly true that it is the brother that killed his own brother we know these things we know that this has happened from in, from inside battle coming from within very dangerous the first problem about such battle is to identify the source and now in this case it's not just one they teamed up together now let's look at the scenario objectively how did they come out because as of the time that the heard that they are coming they're already there that is to say there are a series of meetings international meetings between moab and ammon and mount Seir. how do we go about wiping away this, this particular nation of Judah. They have met again and again. They have dis discussed terms and conditions, how they are going to go about the battle and what they will do in order to be able to strike them down. They must have gathered together, joined forces together, trained their armies together. A lot of things has happened without the children of Judah knowing that these things are going on. That's one thing. We must be living in expectance of battle. That is how people are overtaken. You know, because if you don't know that the enemy is planning for you, you may be thinking that, yes, that everything is normal. You don't know that the devil has gone behind using your own people, people that are supposed to be supporting you, sponsoring you. I mean, to fight against you. You may not know that series of meetings and plannings are going on by the devil and his agents to stop you to stop your progress sometimes when they don't go physical uh, spiritual they also go physical but I, 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 there is a hope that's why god is bringing it up this morning there is a hope jehoshaphat feared anything that makes you afraid anything that makes you gets you worried it could be sickness it could be you know there are times that like in this case now jehoshaphat was not pre-informed there are battles that the enemy that is fighting you will tell you, I am coming. Let's meet in such and so place. But this one, they came upon them suddenly. They, by, they are already dead. So when you hear sudden news of sickness, sudden news of, you know, and, you know, in this kind, it's a dangerous one. It's, a, it's not, it's not a, a common one. The multitude was so much that, I mean, the children of uh, Judah, they, they just plan and say, let's see how they will overcome all this multitude. Captains and all of that. Now, Jehoshaphat feared. And then, but he didn't just fear. He did something which, you know, we are go going to look at the series of things that he did. You know, sometimes and most times, when we want to talk about the power of praise, many times we normally use this scripture because this is where they began to praise God and God began to do something. But the truth is that if you want to understand how to wield the power of praise, you need to understand the context. Because that's how we normally take it out of context and then praise and nothing still happen. There are a series of te steps before Jehoshaphat came out and tell the people, let us sing, let's praise God as God is will be, being praised, he will start fighting for us. There are a series of things that he has done. And that's what, where I want us to pay attention. Winning life battles by faith. Winning life battles by faith. Now, the Bible said, when he heard the news and saw that the battle is already here, he set himself to seek the Lord. That is very vital. He didn't take it light. He didn't assume. He didn't also go to 
any other king and say, please, you know, if you read the history of the kings of the, uh, Judah and Israel, in some cases, when they have a battle, some of them will go to another king and say, please, can you come and join me? I have some people that are fighting against me. Jehoshaphat has that option. In fact, he has gone to help Ahab because Ahab said, come and fight with me and let us take Ramoth Gilead. So he may have option of going to in fact, in verse in chapter 19, he just finished fighting with this, uh, fighting for the son of Ahab, Ahaziah, King Ahaziah. Now he, he, he had an option of going to invite other external forces to come and help him, but he decided to seek the Lord. Believers seeking the Lord. Look at it. He set himself. This matter that is bringing fear to my heart. This condition that is bringing worry to my heart. This situation that is not normal. There are many, many battles that are raging in the realm of the spirit against people's progress, against people's marriage, against people's childbearing, against people's, I mean, spiritual and physical progress. Now, like, like I said, once the situation is coming to the point of bringing fear, bringing worry, and you notice that the, the way you are supposed to move, you are not moving that way. And the thing, you know, is disturbing you. And you feel that, then know that it is time. It is time to seek the Lord. He set himself. He said, set himself. In other words, he said to everyone that in wait. I want to make sure that I am focused on seeking the Lord. That's the first thing that he did. And I want us to note that. And then he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Then, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. So he knew that the battle is not only against him, that is also against the whole land of Judah. So he has to call for everybody to fast. So in this seeking of the Lord, he also employed the weapon of fasting. To avoid distraction to make sure that everything that needed to be put in in order to get the attention of heaven he puts it in he called for fast both himself and all judah come let us seek god by prayer and by fasting that is where they started if we want to take this passage the way we used to preach on it before what we would have done is to see the children of ammon and moab come against us in battle. Though we are afraid, we jump up and say, yes, we can win battle by praises and worship. Then we now start praising and, and say, you know, no. No. Faith has steps. Eh? The first step of faith is that you must seek the Lord in order to hear from him. Because what will make your heart strong, which is an evidence of faith what we take away fear from your heart which is an evidence of faith is the word that you heard from god faith comes not by hearing your own words or hearing the word of a man but by hearing the word of god so if god has not spoken in that matter faith will not never come and if faith does not come you will still be afraid and if you are afraid remember i said where there is no faith, there will be fear. And where there is fear, there is no faith. Are you getting it? If there, you, you are afraid, if you are worried, if you are troubled, there is no faith. It, it, in fact, there is nothing like a, a, you have a small... No, no, no. There is no faith at all. If there is faith, your heart will be strong, even in the face of the enemy. So, he needed to hear the voice of God. The purpose of praying... For Jehoshaphat here, the purpose of fasting for Jehoshaphat here is to hear the voice of the Lord, to hear from God. What do you want? How do we go about this? He is afraid he needed God to speak to him and tell him what to do. Now look at the next verse as we read for that. Verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the hidden. And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. 
Are not thou our God who did drive the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, or we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy position, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, we thou not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that came against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. This is the prayer of Jehoshaphat before the Lord in this day of fasting, in this day of praying, in this day of seeking the Lord. I want you to pay attention to the prayer. He didn't speak carelessly. There are a lot of wisdom and intelligence in this prayer. I mean, the first thing you will need to note is that Jehoshaphat knew God. He has a relationship with God. He knew things that God has done before. And he began to remind God, this is what you have done before. Eh? You, are, you are the one that has, you know, he said, are you not our God who drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people? You gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend, forever. forever. He, he was telling God, remember that this land, you gave it to Abraham forever. Remember. Now, he, he was trying to bring to God's remembrance, the reason why he must not keep quiet in this battle. The reason why he, he will need to come to their rescue. Many times, we believers, we don't pray reasonable, reasonably. We don't try to tell God the reason why we want him to do what we are expecting him to do. Are you getting it? We are just saying, God, I need a husband. I need a husband. Say it seven times. Jump up and say, I need. listen, why do you need a husband? Why do you need a child. Okay, you have girls, you want a boy. Why do you need a, a boy? Have you spoken to God? The reason why you need that has to do with him. See, li listen, when you are praying, you must be very, you must find out how to move God by prayer. God is moved when we pray reasonably. That's why he said, bring forth your strong reasons. Come, let us reason together. Have you not read it in the Bible? Isaiah 1 verse 18. Come, let us reason together. That's, it says, says the Lord. Come, let us reason together. So many times we pray prayers. You, you, you have a battle in your place of work. Maybe let's say your promotion is withheld. Or you are into business, contract, and you are not having contract. You're not, what have you told God that should be the reason why he should give you a job? Are you, are you getting it? How have you prayed in a very serious way. Have you been able to recognize what God has done before? Look at how Jehoshaphat was able to recognize what God has done before. How he has wielded his power in the past to do great and mighty wonders for his, his people. And the covenant he has with Abraham and all of that. He now came to the point where he now said to him, look at these people that are fighting against us. We have not done them anything. And you yourself was the one that prevented, so he knew history. You prevented the children of Israel from fighting them when they were marching to this land. You did not allow them to invade them. Now, the same people is coming to uproot us from our possession. This very intelligent. If you are God and you hear this prayer, eh, you will be moved. Are, are you getting me? Many times, we, I don't know, we blame God, we blame things, we blame situations, when we have not prayed with knowledge, with wisdom, when we have not spent time to present our case, our matter to God in such a way that God can be moved, God can be touched. There are times that people will be telling me how their condition, how their situation, 
I will be moved. Like yesterday, one of the brothers <laughs> was sharing with me an experience he had when he almost lost his admission. Admission that he had sought and gotten. And then because he was not able to pay the school fees within the time that was um, stipulated by the school, the schools cut off and said, you don't have admission again. And he said he cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried for hours. Then at the time as he was crying, he said he heard the voice of the Spirit. He said, this your crying will not help you. Eh? This your crying will not help you. You better stop crying. What do you want? Say it. And then, believe God and praise him. Instead of crying, praise God. So after about three hours of that, he now, when he heard that, he now started telling God. Look at what he told God. Listen carefully. I hope you are following me. He said to God, that um, you are God and you have the power to do everything. Eh? You have the power to open up this portal, extend this um, um, uh, time for me to be able to pay school fees and even provide school fees for me. You can do it. But even if you didn't do it, I'm going to serve you. When he said that, it was before me. When he said that, I, I couldn't hold tears from my eyes. That word moved me. I, I almost had, in fact, I have to just use the idea to clean the tears that came out of my heart was melted. I was like, Kai, even if you decide that I will not go to school, I will not be offended at you. I will still serve you. But I know that you have the power to do this for me. I was moved. He didn't know that I cried. I, you know, there's a way somebody will come, <laughs> come for counseling. You start crying before somebody because of what he said. I, I was moved to tears. Because of the, 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 the things he said, he said to God. We must learn to move God. I am sure that God was moved when Jehoshaphat said this words. Words move God. West carefully prayed. Are you getting me at all? Listen, let me repeat. You have reached the age of getting married and there's nothing holding you and you are not getting married. The first person come propose. After a while, the whole thing scatters. Second person, this is a battle against your marriage. And if you don't take it serious, you will not get married. You will get old and that will be the end. Don't relax about abnormal situations that when you remember them, they will cause you to be afraid. They will Don't relax. Don't ever relax. You must have to move God in that situation. You, have, you must have to move God in such a way that God himself will say yes. Something needs to be done for this person. Sometimes you say, hey, but God understands everything. He knows my heart. He knows everything. He should do everything. That is not God. He say, ask. And you shall, to him that asks it, receive it. Him, so not everybody receives. Not everybody finds. It is the one that asks. That is God's way. And people of God, if we don't know God's way, and if you don't follow God's way, he will keep on crying, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. So we read the Bible, we see the way of God in the Bible. Look at it this morning. Then let's hear the next response in verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hacking ye all Judah and all inhabitants of of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, Paul says the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus, and you shall find them at the end of the brook. 
before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself standing still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, be not dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You know, this brother that I just talked about that I met yesterday, he said that when he began to you know, turn the empty cry to reasonable words of prayer, talking to God, telling God, even if you don't give me, I'm going to. You know, you have prayed for a child. You have prayed for a job. You have prayed for breakthrough. You need to come to the point where you will tell God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to serve you till the end of my life with all joy, with all my heart. Even if you don't give me a husband, I, have, I, will, I will not go back. I know that you can give me a husband and you know that I need a husband. But even if you decide not to give me a husband, Lord, I want to give you a promise that I'm going to serve you till the end of my life and I'm not going to be offended at you. He spoke reasonably to God. He said he had a voice. As soon as he began to pray that way, he had a voice. And that voice said, I am going to command them no, he said, I have commanded them because of your prayer now. I have commanded them to extend the portal, to open it up until you, you pay your school fees. He said, the thing is too, too big for him to believe that, but he heard it in his inner man. And do you know that that was what exactly happened? The thing has closed she, he tried to enter, he couldn't enter. But after that, the thing reopened again. And miracle came and he was able to pay miracle provision to pay that school fees and retain his admission. Are you following me at all? The word of God came straight when Jehoshaphat prayed. Look at it. The, the spirit of God came upon Jahaziel. And he began to trace. The Bible is not writing for nothing. He began to trace, trace Jahaziel until he was able to trace him to Asaph. You know who Asaph is? He's a choir master that David himself trained. And he got into the spirit of the psalmist. And he began to write psalms just like David. Now, why did the spirit of God <laughs> come through that lineage? Because this battle has something to do with the choir. Are you following me? This battle has something to do with singing and praising. So God has to pass through that lineage and say, this is how I want to reveal myself now. And I want you to take note of something in verse 17. He said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. If I were you, I would underline this battle, T-H-I-S. This battle. Now listen. That is very significant. This is a specific instruction about this particular battle. It's not every battle that you will not need to fight. Are you, are you following me? This particular battle, you will not need to fight. The Lord himself will fight every battle, everything. But there are battles, listen, that's where we make mistakes. There are battles that God is expecting you to what? To fight. And as you fight, he will come in and are you getting it now? But this battle, so that is why you need to get divine instruction. You need to hear from God concerning every battle. What is our topic? Winning life battles by faith. Life battles, they are not only one. There are several battles that you must, in fact, at every junction of a man's life, you have to fight. You have to fight when you are about to travel outside, maybe to get your visa, you have to fight. I remember one of our brothers that want to uh, get traveled to outside and he needed to write some exams, about three exams or so. Each time he has an exam, you know what he does? He's with me then. He will go for set apart. He's preparing for exam, he's not reading. He's preparing for exam, he's going for set apart to 
pray and pray over the weekend. When he finished praying, he will come back and go and write the exam. He knew that when it comes to this travel, that several ancestral spirits, several demons that want to keep the family poor, will not allow this travel. He know, and I know too. So he goes, he reads his book, oh, but he knows that the spiritual aspect of this exam is more prevalent than the physical. Every exam he must go for set apart. Even when he passed all the exams and started looking for a um, job over there, he, he, the, the same thing continued. Are, are you getting it? He, he go, went for interview, interview, interview. At a time, he was like, I'm tired of going for interview. Up to 30 interviews. Nothing worked. I, I, one day, he told me that he's tired. I said, don't be discouraged. Then one of the days he was going for the interview, the one he was going now, he just knocked on my head and said, I'm going for an interview. I said, nail down. He nailed down immediately. I prayed and said, God. As I was praying, God spoke to me and said, I will give you two jobs and you will choose one. Listen, when God speaks, that's when faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. Are you getting me at all? The, the battle is going to be won by faith. But faith is not going to come just because you have prayed. Like Joshua has prayed. It is not after praying, he now says, God, thank you because you know you have heard me. There must be a response. It is what God said to you that will build your faith. That you will now move to the battle. Are you getting me? Let me use an example. The devil faced you with a battle with a sickness. Sudden attack on your health. And it's not a sickness that is common. You know some dangerous sicknesses. If it is malaria that they say you have. Yeah, you remember malaria drugs. Some of us, you just... But I don't want to call some, <laughs> some them of dangerous sickness. They just say that they are you know, somebody with that kind of thing. Now, the first thing that will happen to you is fear. Because this is dangerous. But you need to hear what God is saying. Are you getting it now? You need to hear the response from God. Was it not the prayer of Hezekiah that moved God? Even when God has told Isaiah to tell him that he's going to die. Are you getting it? There's a way he spoke to God and God came back and said to Isaiah, go back and give him my response. His prayer moved God and God changed his verdict. So prayer moves God. And it is when God is moved that he speaks. Listen, God is not like man that can just say, Hi, it has been long I talked to you. Let me just talk some, some, uh, some things more. No, God only speaks when he is moved. And he is only moved by prayers that are well prayed. Are you getting me at all? From the heart, set to seek him. Now, this man of God spoke and gave direction. He said, the battle is the Lord's and you shall no need to fight. He said, he gave precise information about the enemy. He said, tomorrow go you against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. So, it's like they don't even know where they were gathered. Are you getting it? It's like they want to attack by sudden without even them knowing where they he said, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruah. You shall find them. <laughs> this is a very dangerous battle. God is telling them where they are to show you that they are hidden enemies. Are you getting it? They are not on the surface. And that's one of the things. So they, they plant everything and know that they are, we are going to strike them. We are going to finish them. That God gave precise information about the battle and tell them where to stand. Then let's read the next response of Jehoshaphat after the word of God came. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathite and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. 
And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Look at his response. After the word of God has come, faith came. Fear left. He was not the one that was telling the people, don't be afraid. Believe in the Lord. Faith comes by hearing. Listen, when God speaks, he has finished what he's doing. Once he speaks, that's why the, 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 the weapon, the weapon of our warfare eh, is encap encapsulated in the word of God. When you read, when you read the um, armor, the Christian, the armor that a Christian should put on in Ephesians chapter 6, if you look at all of them completely, they are all talking about the word of God. But the word of God in different angle. The belt of truth, which truth? Is it not the word? Eh? Shield of faith, how does faith come? Is it not from the word? Sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? Hey, met of salvation, how do you get salvation? By the word. I get it. Gospel. True of the gospel. What is the gospel? The word. So, the, the real weapon, we, that, that weapon we have to manifest in a particular way for a particular battle. So, in this case, the moment God spoke, that's why press to hear him. Believers, press to hear his voice. When you go to pray, press to hear his voice. When you present your case to him, press to hear his voice. Let him speak to you concerning the matter, concerning the situation, because it is his wisdom expressed in his word to you that will bring the solution. His wisdom expressed in his word to you will bring the solution. Jehoshaphat's faith became strong. He set up the choir to be praising God before the army. <laughs> Look at the Bible. He said, Look at verse uh, 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out, they went out before the army. So you, I want you to see the procession. There are army. The soldiers are there. But instead of the soldiers being in the front, who are now in the front? The singers. The singers. Now, I want you to see that it was not only Jehoshaphat that was... <laughs> he has to strengthen the people. Say, believe in the Lord. God has spoken to us. God has come for us. Believe him. As he said it, he's going to do it. Winning life battles by faith. Believe that which God has said. Stand there. If he said he's going to do it, he will do it. Listen. Press to hear God concerning that situation. Press to hear God concerning your family your business, your job, your situation, your marriage. Press to hear God. If you had before and it looks as if what you had is not coming to pass, go back again. Is the Lord speaking to somebody this morning? You, let's say you went to pray before and God spoke to you about your marriage, about your business, how he's going to bless and all of that and you are not seeing it come to pass. Go back to God again and say, God, are you not the one that spoke to me before? concerning this business, concerning my marriage, concerning my children, concerning my childbearing, and all of that. Why is it that what you say to me is not coming to pass? What is it that is delaying it? Go and inquire from the Lord. I had a story of a woman that got married into her husband's place. And for several years, she doesn't have a child. Three years, yes. Three years, no conception. So, that was when he don't know her that she has to pray. She thought it was a normal thing. So, when she now went into prayers and was asking God, I married as a virgin. Why we people that married, you know, not as a virgin, unbelievers, be conceiving and be giving birth to children and me? She stayed 
in, in the place of prayer for three days with fasting until the word of the Lord came to her. When the word came, God said to her that there is a battle in the family that you are married into. The battle arose because the forefathers, they buried the, one of the fathers of the family, I think great grandfather or something like that. They buried the man with a living human being. God was showing her the thing. This is the source of your battle. And why the, the, the young man was being buried, he, he, he spoke and said that no male child will be born in this family. That did not work in the first generation. It didn't work in the second generation. When this lady entered the family, that thing came up. God said, that is what is behind this. And Nan told her how to pray, how to pray, so that she will handle it. That was how she got conceived and began to have children. Winning life battles by what? Faith. Don't forget that faith is not just, I believe God. Uh, what did the Bible say? I believe in what the Bible said. But remember, you need to hear God afresh. Somebody getting me? Concerning this battle, that's the, the emphasis. You don't, each battle has unique. Concerning this battle, look at how it's going to happen. Are you getting me at all? If you remember the story of David we read about three days or four days ago, where he fought the Philistines in the valley of Rephim. After finish with them, God said, go and fight them. I will give them to you. He came, they came back again. And God said, concerning this particular one, though in the same valley of Rephim, though the same Philistines gathered again to fight you, but don't go out yet. Watch me. I will first go before you through a noise on the top of Mulberry Tree. When you hear a sound of a marching, that is to say the armies of heaven are now marching to fight the enemy. When you hear, hear the sound, that's when you should go out. Knowing that I have gone before you to fight. This battle, that is why you need to hear God afresh. If you just say, the Bible says by his stripes I'm healed, or that kind of thing. Of course, for normal cases, it will work. But when there is this kind of dangerous situation that is threatening, bringing fear and all of that, you have to inquire. You need to find out what is going on. Are you getting me? Let me give you an example so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Under normal circumstances, if I have a false symptom of sickness coming to my body, false, I call it the lie of the devil. By his stress, I'm healed. I will roar and that ends. But there are some times, one or two or three occasions in the past, that I said, by his stress, I'm healed. I remember this one happened almost 20 years ago when I was still undergraduate in the university. I said it, said it, no way. <laughs> the thing was increasing until I have to leave. Are you following me? I have to leave that uh, confession and move to real seek. I set myself to seek God. I say, God, are you not the one that said that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed? Why is it that I am, you know, believing it and confessing it in this situation and it's not? And God said, this battle, this particular case is different. It now reminded me how I'm supposed to go to fellowship then. And instead of going to fellowship, I went to read my book. He said, that was when as you, you, you left where you're supposed to be. That was how this one came about. I said, eh, <laughs> I didn't know. He, he just spoke to me. It was clear. I said, so what do I do? I'm sorry. I, I, he says, now, you have to find a brother and confess it to. And then he will pray for you. Do you know that immediately I called a brother and told him that he prayed. That was the end of something that has lasted for days. Days. The moment I called a brother and said, look at what I did. Look at how God spoke to me. Please pray for me. And he prayed for me. That was the end of that. It ended instantly. I'm speaking before God. Man. Are you getting me? There are situations, cases like that. I remember when it happened to my son. I mean, when, when I see sickness in any of my children, I will roar. You devil, get out of this place. But this one, I roared, nothing. I exercised faith, nothing. I quote scriptures, nothing. 
I know that this, bat this battle, I set myself, like Jehoshaphat, to seek God. I say to God, why is it that this is what you said? I've spoken and all that, and it's not coming to pass. Are you following me at all? You must press. This morning is different. I say it's a unique morning. We are going to pray, but you need to have knowledge before the prayer. That's why I'm, I'm taking some time. Eh? How do we go about this? What is happening? Does it mean that your word is not true? Should I go after preaching to people, invited to preach here and there, I will go to hospital and get a file and card and be in the line, man of God? You are not understanding what I'm talking about. The person in front of you is a, um, an unbeliever. The person at your back is an unbeliever and you are in the line. And you are a preacher. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And by your hand, God has healed sick people. And it's not even about a preacher. But I'm just saying to God, you said when I serve you, you, should take, you will take away sickness from my midst. What is happening? And then God spoke to me and said, if you are serving me, I have taken away sickness from your midst. I said to God, but what is this, this one that is happening to this boy? What is happening to him? God said, that one is not sickness. Believe me, believe me. I have taken away sickness from you. Aye. It came like a, it was a revelation. I understood something from what he said. He said he has taken away that his word, I should believe him. Now listen, I have read that scripture, but I couldn't believe enough. But when God spoke life into that scripture again, my faith became strong. I went to my wife and said, see, this baby is not sick. God told me now that this baby is not sick. That he has taken away sickness from our midst. And I have to give the boy a name, Hailed. That was the end of that, I mean, weeks of consistent, constant sickness. Are you, are you following me at all? We must learn to seek God concerning each battle because our enemy is greater than us. Look at what George Jeff, said. He only talked to measuring our physical, our human strength with, him, with the devil. He is greater than us. Except God be with us. Except God help us. George Jeff said, he said, oh our God, we thou not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Brothers and sisters, I want to challenge us this morning. Because many of us, you have been struggling. You have been struggling. Struggling with debt. Struggling with, I mean, you know, this, the way these things are. Most cases, sometimes I, I will look at disciples, look at believers. It looks as if nobody is better than another. In terms of finance. When you say, okay, let us... It, one, one day I asked a brother, I say, if you, if you buy a car and start going about with car, buy your own land, build your own house, will it be a crime? Have you ever even thought about that? Have you been disturbed that where you are, you should not be where you're supposed to be? Who told you that you cannot get to the peak that God has ordained for you? How did you relax? I think one of the prayers we are going to pray is for God to awaken us to the reality of battles. Because some of them will come in disguise and you will not know. You think that is a normal thing. Amen. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 21. Uh, verse 22 now. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, to, to praise when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were what? They were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies, 
fallen in the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. Somebody say three days. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Bereka. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Bereka unto this day. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord has met them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with sultry and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries. When they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him rest round about. May that be true of you too. That your God will give you rest round about. In the name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful scenario. Eh? When they began to sing and to praise God, the Lord sent an ambushment. The Lord sent an ambushment. And the children of Ammon and Moab, they teamed up together and looked at the inhabitants of Seir and said, you people are the enemy that we came here to fight. And they began to fight them and killed all of them. And when they finished killing all of them, they now face themselves. The other person looked at the person and said, you are, the, you are my enemy. The other person said, you are my enemy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Our God can do... You know, the song that Moses sang when he delivered, he said, who is like unto thee, O Lord? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, fearful in praises, doing wonders, doing wonders. This is a wonder. And you remember he told them that for this battle you don't need to fight. Are you getting it? He has already decided how to. Did they fight? Did they fight the battle? So, but remember it is in this battle. Are you getting it? There are cases you will not need to go to market and money will enter your pocket. But don't say <laughs> that every, every case is like that. No. You must be current with God, current with what God is saying, current with what heaven is saying. So, but the point is that when God stepped in as a result of their faith, exercise of their faith, then they had victory. And that victory brought also abundance. You know what they now did? Instead of fighting, they now began to labor to gather the spoil. And they have to gather the spoil for three days. Do you understand that? 24 hours from morning till night, night to morning, they were picking up silver, gold, all the, because, you know, I don't know how those people came out with all their wealth, all their, so, you know, when God wants to bless you, that blessing sometimes and most times comes in a disguise of a battle. Pay attention to that. When God wants to lift you, when God wants to do something for you, when God wants to bless, it may come as a battle. But that is why you need to seek him because the victory that he will bring to you, first of all, he will make you to know him more. Number two, he will now open, open dimensions, new dimensions of you know, things that you never ever thought about. Think about what happened yesterday when we studied uh, how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. It has not happened before. And God is always doing a new thing. A new thing. And so this morning, as we are going to pray, we are going to touch so many things in prayer. I want you to note that there is a God in heaven. He's our God. And we need to put our confidence in him. That's why I sang that song at the beginning. I have confidence in you. I have trust in you. Now, with God, there is no cause to be alarmed. There's no cause to fear. 
Because when we seek him concerning every battle, we are sure to hear him. And when we hear him, by faith, we are winning all battles. And that's how we keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Somebody, again, should be, I mean, detest where you are because there is a place you are supposed to be. Detest it. And then you have to, this morning, I think we are going to be very specific about the battle you have noticed. We are also going to pray if there are things that are happening in disguise as a battle and we, don't, we are not aware. We are going to ask God to open our eyes to see. But the one that we know, as this case was done this morning in this place, as we saw it, that's how our own battles will be fought this morning. If you believe that, rise on your feet and begin to appreciate God for his word and begin to ask him to help us this morning as we begin to, you know, pray. We are going to pray several prayers. I want to first of all thank him. Say, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for showing me your way. Thank you because there is a hope for me. Thank you for, because there is a, a hope in you. I believe in you. I know that with you, I am safe with you. I will prosper with you. I'll be strong and healthy with you. I will do better in all, in all that I do. Begin to appreciate him. Begin to give him praise. Lepa Shandu Kanda Landarabas.